What's up, DBE fam? Welcome back to the show. This episode, honestly, could be an hour-long training, and I could talk about a million different key points, but I'm going to keep it really simple. Here's what you want to do if you want to make money online. I'm going to give you three things. And again, I, my proprietary framework has more than three things, but this is the meat and potatoes. This is this is the tofu and pasta, all right? that's a, That's not a dish I want. This is all you need to do if you want to make money online. Number one, write this down. Let's go. We're jumping right in. I want you to create content that solves a problem, period, end of story. It's that simple. Create content that solves a problem. Now, of course, we can zoom out and we can go backwards and we can say, well, who are you solving the problem for? Who's your ideal client? What's the niche? What's the language that your ideal client is using? What have they tried previously? What are they currently trying that's not working? Like we can make it so much bigger, but at the end of the day, your content should be solving a problem because that's what we do. We're in the business of solving problems, which is why when a problem arises in your business or life, you should be welcoming it with open arms because every problem, every challenge, every storm, every wobble is an opportunity for you to learn. It's a wisdom creating machine. It's a wisdom opportunity. It's a growth opportunity. It's a learning opportunity. And you, my friend, are in the business of selling wisdom. What a gift right? When you create content that solves a problem, it does a lot of things. It showcases that you can solve a problem. It showcases that you are able to help people get out of the problem that they're currently in. It showcases you as an authority. It showcases you as an expert. It gives credibility. It goes on and on and on and on and on. Now we can do an entire episode on messaging because how you message in your content matters. In fact, messaging is the skill. It's it. It's number one. You learn how to do messaging really well, your business will fly. Messaging is the number one skill to make money online, period. Now, messaging is all encompassing, right? So it's copy, it's storytelling, it's understanding like the client's language and all of these things. There's a lot of pieces to messaging, which is why I said I could do a whole episode on it. So if you're interested in doing an entire episode together with a very specific eight-step framework for messaging... DM me the word messaging. Just DM me like, yes, I'm interested in that. I was listening to the podcast. I'd love to hear more about messaging and I'll put one together, okay? But to make money online, you gotta create content that solves a problem. How much content should I create, Jess? All of it, <laughs> all of it. I mean, it's marketing for your business. People ask that question all the time. And I always say like the quality of your questions will determine the quality of your answers, right? Or, excuse me, the quality of your questions will determine the quality of your life. There's no stupid question, but that's a very low bar question. How much content? How much should I, people ask me all the time, how many posts should I put up a week? What? Like, do you want to open the doors to your brick and mortar every day? Or do you want to open the brick and mortar store doors once a week? That's the equivalent. If you're using social media and content creation as a marketing tool, and that's podcasting, YouTubing, any social media platform, sending out emails to your email list, that's what content is, right? There's a big umbrella for content then ask yourself the question. It's like, well, if you are a store or you're like a big box company, your Amazon, your Nike, your Macy's, your Victoria's Secret, are they really worried or thinking or wondering how much they should be telling you about their product? If anything, they're like, how much more should we be telling you about our product? How many more deals should we offer? How much more can we send out for coupons and emails and commercials and Super Bowls, right? Like, think about it, it's marketing. So you will get out of it what you put into it. If you show up once a week, you're probably going to get that type of result. <clears throat> now, I am not a huge fan of like you having to be married to social media. I get it. I want you to live your life. I don't want to be married to social media either, but it is a tool. It is a marketing tool for your business. And if you don't market your business, people will not know about your business. And if you don't market your business, it's like you're winking at people in the dark. So they won't know about it. They're not going to buy from you. You're not going to be making sales. There's not going to be word of mouth retention, excuse me, word of mouth referrals. There's not going to be retention because you don't have repeat buyers because you don't have first time buyers. You get the picture. So maybe it doesn't have to be you. Maybe you hire someone to help with content. Maybe you have a system. Maybe you use a flow. Maybe you use an automation. Maybe there's different types of content. Maybe you only create the content that really lights you up and you only do that type of content. Maybe someone else is helping you do it. But it's your job. It's it's literally your job to market your business. No one's going to market it for you. So if you want to make money online, step number one is create content that solves a problem, period. Number two, with that content, also build authority 
by sharing your story as well as other people's stories. Build authority sharing your story, what you've been through, why you do what you do, what is your brand value, what is your core value, what are the transformations that you've been through, what certifications do you have, why are you in this industry, share your client stories, what have they been through, how did you get them from A to B, what type of pain were they in, what type of pleasure do they now have, why did they choose you, why did they come to you, what wins did they have, this is going to build authority. You know what else builds authority? Consistency. <laughs> the more consistent you can be in both, yes, showing up and posting, but also in just your messaging, the more consistent you are in your messaging, the more authority it creates. Could you imagine if Starbucks, like one week or one month, it's like coffee, 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 coffee. And then all of a sudden during the holiday season, they're talking about, um, um, I should have been prepared for this analogy and I wasn't all of a sudden they're talking about underwear. What? Underwear, underwear, underwear. What? I thought Starbucks sold coffee. And then the next month they're talking about pools and how they can like put a pool in your backyard. You're like, okay, now I'm confused. Authority comes from repetition. Authority comes from consistency. There's a saying in branding and marketing that I'm going to butcher, but it has something to do with like, um, it's something around how your, your customers, your audience members, your quote unquote followers should be able to repeat back to you what it is that you do. And, and the saying goes something like, you know, you know, you've made it, or, you know, you've gotten successful in your marketing when your customers are saying what it is. Mm, I butchered it, but it's something like that. And how does that happen? It happens through repetition. Like, how do we all know? Just do it. Cause we've seen it and heard it a lot. How do we all know theme songs to like Disney? Because we've seen it and heard it a lot. How do we all know fill in the blank? When you see it and hear it a lot, then there's the repetition, which creates the authority. It also creates brand trust. Because again, if your brand Starbucks sold coffee in January and then underwear in February and then pool, swimming pools in March, you're, you're losing trust. You're subconsciously losing trust from people because they don't know what to expect when they go to you. And it's confusing. And it's not confusing because people are stupid. It's confusing because I don't know what you do. I don't know if you can help me because in January you could help me, but then February and March, like I definitely was not looking for what you were offering. Right. So create content that solves a problem create and build your brand authority, sharing your story and other people's story and being really consistent and putting in the reps and doing repetition to create that authority and trust. And then number three, this is the big one. I hope you have your paper out. This is the one, this is the one, this is the one that people don't do or they don't do enough. Are you ready for it? <laughs> Invite them to work with you. Now, I know I said that like kind of snarky, but people aren't doing that. People aren't actually selling. People aren't letting people know how they can work with them. Your offer is an invitation for people to go deeper. It's an invitation for people to buy your stuff. It's an invitation for people to get their hands on the solution. It's not sleazy. It's not sleazy. Imagine you are a professional tire changer. Like you work in the pit for NASCAR, you're a professional tire changer. And in your car, you not only have a spare tire, but you have all of the tools that you would need. And you have 10 years experience and knowledge and you could change a tire in under 10 seconds. It's like your jam. And you're out in the desert and you're driving. You're in, you're in the Utah desert. This happened to us, actually. You're in the Utah desert. And you haven't seen a dang person or a car for 300 miles. And all of a sudden you see this poor man on the side of the road with a flat tire and there is no cell phone service. And you haven't seen a person or a gas station in 300 miles. And you have all of the tools quite literally and the knowledge to help this man change his tire. This old man, would you drive by or would you stop and say, sir, do you need help? I can help you. I have all the tools. It's going to take me 10 seconds. Step aside. Let me help you. Now, if you're listening to this episode, I know you're a step aside person because you're a service provider. That's what you do. You're a giver. You're an impact driver. Step aside. Let me help you. That is what inviting them to your offer is. Step aside. I have something for you. 
oh, you're struggling with that thing. I have a solution. You don't have to buy it. I'm not going to tie you down and make you do it. But if you believe in what you do and you believe in your offers and your products, then you damn well sure should be sharing them on the internet and letting people know that that's how they can be working with you. That's how they can, they can solve their problem. That's how they can get to their desired outcome, right? It's where we go back to saying, if you have a solution to a problem, it's your responsibility to share it. If you don't share it, you're stealing, you're robbing people. You're robbing from people. You're stealing their transformation opportunity. Not to mention, if you've really done a great job in your messaging, which I'm thinking we just need to do an episode on this. So I kind of answered my own question, but still DM me and let me know. When you do a really great job in your messaging, you don't have to sell anything. You don't have to sell anything. Messaging creates demand and desire. Messaging is what you do when you're dating somebody for years before they propose. When Mike got down on one knee and asked me to marry him, I know this is crazy, but I did not say yes because of the ring. <gasps> what? I did not say yes because of where we were, what he was wearing, what the music was that was playing. I did not say yes because of the weather outside. I did not say yes because of how he asked me. And I definitely didn't say yes because he created a sales page. I said yes because of all of the years of dating beforehand, because during the dating we had experiences together. We had conversations together, hard conversations. We had great memories together. We built trust together. There was credibility. There was authority. We made stories together. We got to know each other. We got to know each other's friends and family. There's all these things that happen when you're dating somebody that ultimately get you to the decision of if you're going to say yes or no. And if you've ever been proposed to, or you've ever proposed to somebody, if you've ever been proposed to, you know that you already knew yes or no in your head before the person asked you. It's not like they ask and you're like, let me make like a pros and cons chart. Can I get back to you in like 36 hours? <laughs> like that's not what happens. You already know in your head if it's a yes or no, you're basically just waiting around for the question. That's exactly what your clients and your audience members are doing too. They already know in their head if it's a yes or no because of the messaging, because of the content that you've been putting out and the problems that you've been helping them solve, because of the authority that you've been creating through sharing your story and other people's story, stories, because of the credibility that you've been putting out, because of the trust that you've been building by being consistent and putting in the repetitions and being there for them when they expect you to be there, not whiplashing, selling them underwear and then selling them, you know, swimming pools and tree houses. They already know they're going to say yes. They're just waiting for you to ask them. Now, of course, when you ask, which is the offer or the invitation or the promotion or the launch, sometimes people who want to say yes end up saying no. Because all of a sudden, maybe they don't see the value in it. Maybe it's way more than they budgeted for. Maybe they're actually not thrilled about the transformation inside. They thought it was going to be a little bit different, but the route you're going to take them on isn't exactly what they wanted. So they can have a yes in their head and then say no. And on the flip side of that same coin, guess what? They could be like, oh, hell no. And then they all of a sudden say yes. This happens to us every year when we launch Empower. People come to DBE Live and they're like, I am not buying Empower. I know where this is going. I've watched you do this before. And then all of a sudden, here they are in class 19. We have a couple of people right now in class 19, as I'm recording this video, who said, I was not going to join. I did not need it. I did not want it. I told myself I wasn't going to join for all the different reasons. And then they end up joining. So people can also have a no in their head and then switch to a yes. When that happens, you know you're definitely on the right path. Because if you're getting people to convert from a no to a yes then that means your messaging is really strong. It's really working. And if people were a yes, and then they are continue to be a yes, then you, you hit the nail on the head. So if you want to make money online, you're going to number one, create content that solves a problem. How much content? Well, you're going to get out of it what you put into it. Number two, you're going to create and build authority through being consistent and putting in the repetitions by sharing your story and other people's stories. It builds proof and credibility. And number three, you're going to invite them to work with you. And that literally can be, I've got two spots open for a one-on-one, -on -one, or it can be a webinar or like a masterclass that you end up opening doors to your signature program after. It can be a link that you put up in your stories that goes to a membership. Heck, it could be free. You could just be telling people about your free training or your free opt-in page or your free PDF. 
That is an invitation for them to go deeper. It's an invitation for them to work with you. That is you quote unquote selling. So you can sell something even if it's free. So that's it, my friends. I could go so much deeper. Like I said, our framework is a little bit longer than this, but ultimately that's the meat and potatoes of the middle three steps. That's all you really need to do. We're complicating it. It's simple, not easy. If it were easy, everybody would be doing it. Everybody would be making money. Everybody, their content would be converting. Everybody would be at six figures a year, six figures a month, so on and so forth. But it's not easy. It's not easy because it requires work. It requires you to consistently show up. It requires you to do the work, to think outside the box, to talk to the people, to get the market research, to make the tweaks, to do the things. It's simple. It's very simple. Don't overcomplicate it. It's simple, not easy. Get out of your own way. All right, my friend. You've got content to create. Don't just consume. Make sure you're creating. I'm going to go do the same. All right. I love you. See you in the next one. Cheers to revolution. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you loved this episode, I invite you to be a part of our ripple effect and share it with a friend. And please, if you feel called, take 30 seconds to leave a five-star review and I'll be forever grateful. Until next time, cheers to your evolution.